Okay, everybody's favorite, graphing trigonometric functions. Uh, so this table here, honestly, I don't know what I was intending to do with this table, but what we want to look at is um, the important factors. This C value, this is going to be the phase shift. And so that phase shift means if I'm moving to the left or to the right. If you recall from the first semester, we looked at parent functions, such as x squared, the square root of x. And when we add a value to the x or subtract a value to the x in the function, it shifts to the left or to the right. Um, and this b value is the coefficient of x. If we want to get the period, this is 2 pi divided by b. And sometimes it helps us if we struggle with fractions to write this as 2 pi divided by b. And the amplitude is going to be the absolute value of a, so that value right there. So as long as we know that the period is 2 pi divided by b and the amplitude is the absolute value of a, we should be fine. And so let's graph these six functions. Let's start off with number one. Now the key here is that we see that the amplitude is the absolute value of 2, which of course is just 2. Now the period that is going to be 2 pi divided by what we are multiplying theta by. If theta is being divided by 4, that means it's being multiplied by 1 fourth. So b is equal to 1 fourth. So when we have 2 pi divided by b, or 2 pi divided by 1 fourth, that's 2 pi times 4 over 1, which is 8 pi. And so if I want to graph this, I want to figure out what I'm going to have on my x-axis. If this were just sine of theta, I would want values that gave me 0, 1, negative 1. Easy to graph. So those values where I'd have 0, 1, negative 1 would be the sine of 0, sine of pi over 2, sine of pi, sine of 3 pi over 2, the sine of 2 pi. And basically what I want to do is I want to undo everything that's been done inside these parentheses. So if I'm subtracting 2 pi over 3, the first thing I'm going to do is add 2 pi over 3 to all of these points. And we can see here this is going to give me 2 pi over 3. If I need common denominator, this is going to be um, multiplying. The common denominator here is going to be 6. This is going to be 3 pi over 6 plus 4 pi over 6 is going to give me 7 pi over 6. Um, this right here is going to be 5 pi over 3 uh, because this is... Um, 3 pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3 is 5 pi over 3. Right here, this is going to be 9 pi over 6 plus 4 pi over 6 gives me 13 pi over 6. Finally here, uh, 6 pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3 gives me 8 pi over 3. And that's just from doing the opposite here. And next up, what I need to do, I need to undo this divided by 4. So if I take theta and divide it by 4, I need to take all these values and multiply by 4 over 1. I'm doing the inverse operation for all of these. And so when I multiply 2 pi over 3 by 4, I get 8 pi over 3. Here, this reduces, uh, so I actually get 14 pi over 3. Here, when I multiply, I'm going to get 20 pi over 3. This reduces again, so I get 26 pi over 3. This reduces again, and so I get 32 pi over 3. Uh, sorry. 3. And so when I graph this, These are now my x values. And so when I plug these x values into my function, 
that's going to give me what to plug in here. So that, for example, when I plug in 8 pi over 3 and I divide that by 4, I get 2 pi over 3. And then when I subtract 2 pi over 3, I get 0. And the sine of 0 gives me 0. So the amplitude, again, is going to be 2. So that's going to be 2 and negative 2. These x values are going to be on my x-axis. 8 pi over 3, 14 pi over 3, 20 pi over 3, 26 pi over 3, and 32 pi over 3. So again, once I graph these, 8 pi over 3 is going to give me a 0 and the sine of 0 is 0. Note, I don't start on the y-axis. When I plug in 14 pi over 3, I divide it by 4, and then I add 2 pi, or, sorry, I subtract 2 pi over 3. That's like going to the left in this table, and I end up with pi over 2. Since the sine of pi over 2 is 1, I multiply that by the amplitude of 2, get 2. 20 pi over 3 will give me 0, sine of 0 is 0. 26 pi over 3 will give me a negative 1 times the amplitude of 2 is negative 2. And then finally, 32 pi over 3 will end me back at 0. I connect the points, and I get this. So for number 2, uh, number 2 is sort of the same deal. We know here that we can see the amplitude is going to be 3, and the period is going to be 2 pi divided by, if b is the coefficient when I'm multiplying theta by, this is going to be 2 pi divided by 1 half, since b is 1 half, and so the period is going to be 4 pi. And so again, I start with my beautiful values of 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi and I undo everything that was done. So the first thing is I add pi over 6 to all of these values. And so 0 plus pi over 6 is equal to pi over 6. This is going to be 3 pi over 6 plus pi over 6 is 4 pi over 6, uh, which is 2 pi over 3. 6 pi over 6 plus pi over 6 is 7 pi over 6. This is going to be 9 pi over 6, since I multiply by 3 over 3. 9 pi over 6 plus pi over 6 is 10 pi over 6. Uh, and 10 pi over 6 reduces to 5 pi over 3. And then 12 pi over 6 plus pi over 6 is 13 pi over 6. Next up, what I need to do orange, is to, if I'm dividing theta by 2, I want to multiply by 2 over 1. I'm going to do the inverse. And so here, this is going to be 2 pi over 6, or pi over 3. This is going to give me 4 pi over 3. This is going to give me 7 pi over 3. This is going to give me 10 pi over 3. And this will give me 13 pi over 3. So these are my new values on the x-axis. So if I make my coordinate plane there, uh, this again, I'm going to start to the right. And so I'm going to have pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 7 pi over 3, 10 pi over 3, and finally 13 pi over 3. On the y-axis, I'm going to go to 3 and down to negative 3. And again, graphing this, when I plug in pi over 3, I'm going to get 0. The cosine of 0 is 1, and 3 times 1 is 3. When I plug in 4 pi over 3, I'm going to get 0, and the cosine of 0 is 0. I'm oh, sorry, the cosine um, when I plug in 4 pi over 3, I'm going to get pi over 2. Cosine pi over 2 is 0. When I plug in 7 pi over 3, I'm going to get pi. The cosine of pi is negative 1. And the um, 
Amplitude 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Completing this for the other values. It's not easy to draw on this scratch pad I'm using, but do the best I can. We can see that this is one period of the wave. All right, next up for number three. Let's again address what the amplitude is. The amplitude, well, we're not multiplying anything. Ah, it's one. This is one sign. Period. This might be easier to see that the B value is four. What we're multiplying theta by, it's four. Uh, so B is equal to four. So we do two pi divided by four, and that's two pi over four or pi over two. So the period's gonna be smaller than we've been looking at. All right, and so I'm going to start with my original values, which are going to be, of course, zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. And so first thing I do is to add five pi over six. So if I read this time, if I add, pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, zero plus 5 pi over 6 is 5 pi over 6, uh, that's going to be 3 pi over 6 plus 5 pi over 6 is 8 pi over 6, which reduces to 4 pi over 3, 6 pi over 6 plus 5 pi over 6 gives me 11 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6 plus 5 pi over 6 gives me 14 pi over 6, which is 7 pi over 3. Oops. And then finally, 12 pi over 6 plus 5 pi over 6 gives me 17 pi over 6. Next up, what I want to do, if I am multiplying by 4, I'm going to divide by 4. Or multiply by one fourth. And so when I do this, over here I'm going to get 5 pi over 24. 24, he said. Not 2.4. This is not the most accurate scratch pad. Oh, now this is becoming a comical situation. Uh, over here, this is just going to be pi over 3 because the 4s cancel. Here I get 11 pi over 24. Here I get 7 pi over 12. And over here I get 17 pi over 24. So some nice values there. Again, the coordinate plane. Everything's positive, so only x values here going to be to the right. So I'm going to get 5 pi over 24. We know that's 4. Forget it. I'm tired of fighting this thing. 5 over 3, 11 pi over 24, 7 pi over 12, and 17 pi over 24. Uh, the y-axis is going to go up to 1 and down to negative 1. Looking at the sine function, uh, so sine of, when I plug in 5 pi over 24, I'm going to get 0, sine of 0 is 0, sine 1, so I'm just multiplying by the amplitude, which is just 1, and so it gives me this nice graph. Um, I kind of wrote on top of that, so I just want to emphasize this is 7 pi. All right, next up, oh, we've got a negative amplitude here. So this is going to be interesting. Um, but the amplitude, remember, um, or the coefficient's negative. That will make this interesting. But the amplitude is going to be absolute value, so it's still going to be positive 1 half. Uh, the period is 2 pi divided by b. Well, there's just a single value there, so that's just 2 pi. All right, and... Going to do now. Start with my values: zero, pi over two, pi, three, 
3 pi over 2, 2 pi. And I'm going to add, sorry, I'm going to subtract pi over 3 because here I'm adding pi over 3. So subtract pi over 3, subtract pi over 3, subtract pi over 3, subtract pi over 3, and see what I get. This is going to give me negative pi over 3. Uh, this is 3 pi over 6 minus 2 pi over 6 gives me pi over 6. 3 pi over 3 minus pi over 3 is 2 pi over 3. 9 pi over 6 minus 2 pi over 6 is 7 pi over 6. Um, okay, And then here. 6 pi over 3 minus pi over 3 is 4 pi over 3. Then I would just multiply by 1, but I don't need to do that since if I multiply by 1 or divide by 1, it stays the same. So the amplitude is going to be, again, 1 half. So it's 1 half and negative 1 half on my x-axis here, we're going to have these five points, but notice that one of them is actually negative. So actually, um, what I should have done is not draw in my y-axis quite yet. I know it seems weird, but I'm only going to draw my x-axis at first and do my best to, um, to make sure the amplitude is appropriate and place the y-axis where it should go. So there are my five values. These are evenly spaced, so negative pi over 3, pi over 6, 2 pi over 3, 7 pi over 6, and 4 pi over 3. Now, if I'm graphing this, again, negative pi over 3, that's going to give me 0, and the sine of 0 is 0. Now, pi over 6, when I plug that in, I got pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, but I multiply that by negative 1 half, uh, and I get negative 1 half. 0. Um, when I plug in 7 pi over 6, I get 3 pi over 2. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is going to give me negative 1, but that negative 1 times negative 1 half is actually going to be a positive 1 half. Back to 0. Now the y-axis is going to be, um, if this is negative 1 third, this is actually positive two-thirds. So the y-axis would probably be about there. And I can make this a little bit bigger so that everything lines up. And so this is going to be positive one-half. This is going to be negative one-half. And now I can see that I have my graph. Unfortunately, I missed that point there. But the key is with this, Notice I don't really care about, oh Jesus, I don't really care about what the point is on the y-axis because I didn't plot x is equal to 0 in this. So x is equal to 0 is going to be some weird decimal that is not going to give me a nice rational value. So I don't care about it. So as long as I place my y axis appropriately, this goes through a good estimate of where it's going to be. Okay, number five. Again, the amplitude here. Well, this time it's positive, so it's one half. Um, the period is 2 pi divided by b. So this is 2 pi divided by 2, since 2 is multiplying by theta. So the period is actually just going to equal Hi, interesting. Uh, and so I start with my original values, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And so what we do now, if I'm adding 2 pi over 3, I subtract 2 pi over 3. And so I'm going to get negative 2 pi over 3. This is um, 3 pi over 6 minus 4 pi over 6 is going to give me a negative pi over 6. This is a 3 pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3 is just pi over 3. 
Uh, this is a 9 pi over 6 minus a 4 pi over 6 gives me 5 pi over 6. This is 6 pi over 3. This 2 pi over 3 gives me 4 pi over 3. If I'm multiplying by 2, I want to divide by 2, which is the same as multiplying by 1 half. And so this gives me negative pi over 3. This is negative pi over 12. This is pi over 6. This is 5 pi over 12. And this is going to be pi over 3. So for negative pi over 3 plus 3 pi over 3 would answer me back up at pi over 3. So that shows me that I have that period of pi. Um, sorry, 2 pi over 3. That's going to give me the period pi. Woo, price is averted. Okay, these are my x values. Uh, oops, again, notice that I go into negative, negative territory. So I plot these five x values, and I'll worry about the y-axis later. So negative pi over 3, negative pi over 12, pi over 6, 5 pi over 12, and 2 pi over 3. Um, that y-axis is going to be closer to negative pi over 12 than it is to 5 pi over 6. So it's probably going to be I don't know, about there. I'm looking at this y axis to be an amplitude of one half. I'm going to go up to positive one half and negative one half. And so now I have my values. So I'm dealing with the cosine again. So if I plug in a negative three, I'm going to get zero. Again, cosine of zero is one times the amplitude is one half. And so when I plug in these values, it's going to follow that common shape. Uh, this looks like this because we have this positive value for the coefficient. And that's our lovely little graph. Finally, negative 2 cosine of 2 theta minus pi over 2. All right. So amplitude is the absolute value of that coefficient. So it's the absolute value of 2, which is, of course, positive 2. The period going to be 2 pi divided by the coefficient, which is 2. So the period, again, just like the last one, is going to be equal to 2. So starting off with my 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. This, um, of course, I need to add pi over 2, since in the function, I was subtracting pi over 2. So this one we're going to have, again, positive values making everything nice. So this is pi over 2. Pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 2 pi over 2, which is pi. This is going to give me 3 pi over 2. That's 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. And then this is going to be 5 pi over 2. Notice the range is 4 pi over 2, uh, which is... Oh, sorry, I'm not done yet. I'm not done, I'm not done, I'm not done because I have to multiply by 1 half. If I'm multiplying by 2, I need to divide by 2, which is the same as multiplying by 1 half. So now I get pi over 4. This is going to be pi over 2. This right here is 3 pi over 4. This is going to be 2 pi times pi over 2 is just pi. And then this is going to be 5 pi over 4. Notice the range from pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4 is 4 pi over 4, or pi. And that's my period. So that's how I get that. So again, these are going to be positive values, so I don't need to worry about where to place the y-axis for this one. So I get pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, 
pi and 5 pi over 4. Uh, the amplitude is going to be 2, so that's going to go up to 2 and negative 2. But bear in mind, this negative 2 means everything's going to switch. So when I plug in pi over 4, I get 0. Now the cosine of 0 is 1. However, when I multiply that by negative 2, it becomes negative 2. Same thing for when I plug in 3 pi over 4. I get pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1. Multiplied by the negative 2 is a positive 2. So I get these values. Graphing like this gives me my cosine value. So you're going to have to graph by hand, so make sure you understand that. Make sure you know how to find the period and the amplitude. And um, in terms of your final exam, you don't have to worry about other trigonometric functions. So as long as you focus on sine, cosine, amplitude, and period, then you are set for your final exam.